A beautiful morning, kind friends. Attentive viewers might have noticed that my basket of handspun yarns has been growing fuller and fuller and fuller over time. I need to do something with that, don't I? So yeah, I am going to combine three projects from three different videos into one. Words are coming very easily today, as you can see. <laughs> what yarns am I going to use? First off, this yellow, brown, white, lovely fingering weight yarn that I spun during our sit and spin q and I'll contrast it with the remainder of the cochineal magenta yarn and as a blah, blah, blah. and as a third color we will use the spindle spun scrappy gray yarn I made in France and they look together a bit like this I think this is quite a cool color combination now what is this? Take a guess. What do you think this is? This is another vintage project, of course. It's this one. I chose this project specifically because of the sleeves. I saw Engineering Knits make her Valentine's Day sweater with this specific type of sleeve and, you know, I just wanted this as well. So we are well underway for the front, but I'm going to set back my progress a little bit because my gauge is a little bit bigger than the pattern asks for because the pattern is actually written for a 32 inch bust. And I don't think I have been a 32 inch bust ever since I was 12. So my gauge was a little bit bigger um, but that I was just knitting mindlessly yesterday and forgot that my uh, lengthwise gauge is also a bit bigger, so I'm going to make the stripes a bit thinner. But since it's just straight on knitting, that's just a very normal operation, I think. Now, a couple of days ago, I received a message on Instagram asking me for some tips on knitting garments with handspun yarn. I am not an expert on anything, not on spinning yarn, neither on knitting yarn and not on knitting with hand spun yarn. I possess very little theoretic knowledge. I only possess a lot of experience through shenanigans. So I answered this friendly lady with her question with my uh, shenanigans experience wisdom and I will maybe talk to you about it as well because I thought it's an interesting topic. Because knitting with hand spun you can go two ways. Either you specifically spin a yarn for a project or as I am doing right now, you just take the yarn you already spun and then make a project. If you're an experienced spinner and you're going for the first method, then you can probably perfectly replicate the yarn that is needed for the pattern. But with the second method, that's most probably not the case, especially with the yarns that I am knitting with right now. The grey and the yellow yarn were some scraps that I just spun willy-nilly on my drop spindle on my wheel. I didn't care for the naps, the noils, the thickness. It didn't have to be very consistent. So now when I knit this vintage sweater with this yarn, I must beforehand accept that this will not look like the pretty vintage picture because the yarn is very rustic and it is then very important that you make a gauge swatch which you should always do but I am a chaos goblin so I mostly don't if I know that I have got the right yarn for the project but now I do not know that I have the right yarn for the project. I knew that they were all three fingering weight. They're my comfort yarns. 
but they were not the yarn that pattern off. And I think maybe accepting that it will not look like a commercially spun yarn is something you have to do every time you knit something with hand spun. But personally, I think it actually looks more beautiful. And the final tip that I gave the lady who asked me the question on Instagram was actually just do it. Just do it! Do it! Because there is so much you can learn from just knitting with your hands spun, you know. You will learn which yarn you like to knit with. You will learn more about the qualities of your own yarn. And sometimes they might be contradicting whatever the numbers of your yarn say. Like, I can hit a specific wraps per inch. But that does not always mean my yarn is equal to like a commercial yarn with that wraps per inch. It's something that I had to learn through experience. Also because I did not go the right way and learn everything theoretically. So if you want my pro tip for knitting with your hand spun yarn is just do it. Except for your first skein of yarn. You want to keep that one. Solely for the purpose of just comparing all your yarns to it and seeing how much progress you've made. That's the only reason why you shouldn't knit with your first yarn, but all the other yarns, knit with them. Or crochet if, if that's your craft of choice, crochet, weave, whatever. Use your yarns. And even when it doesn't look perfect, I don't know about you, but for me, I just felt so gosh darn proud of being to, able to wear something that I had spun myself. Just such a warm, enveloping feeling of the yarn, of the process of the yarn, the memories, the smell of the yarn, the feeling of the yarn. Just do it. If you're still hesitating, just do it. Good morning. As you saw, my front is finished, but we are running into a small problem. I had four skeins of this yellow main color, and right now I have one and a half. That's not enough. So Come along, we'll make some more. That's another question people like to ask. How much wool would I need to spin to get a sweater or any other garment? And my answer to that is, love, you're asking the completely wrong person. Because if I knew what the answer was, this wouldn't be the third, I think, project where I completely gauged wrong. But for this specific project, it would of course have helped if I could find specifics on the yarn used for the original. I only found that I needed four ounces of fingering weight yarn, which I had. I had more than that, but I had absolutely no information to how much meters there were in those four ounces. So I had no information about the grist of the yarn, how many meters per how many grams or ounces. And probably my yarn was just heckin' dense. And the yarn for the pattern was not. So if you want to be a good theoretical and knowledgeable spinner, you learn about grist. So how many meters you get per your grams of wool and then compare that to the pattern. But the thing is, I mostly spin this here Flemish sheep, of which I have 30 kilos. Oh, well, right now maybe not 30 kilos. I think I have spun quite a bit. So maybe 28 kilos. <laughs> So I can always 
go scour spin more. Um, I personally have no issues when I don't have enough yarn for my project. I don't think I will run out of the wool very soon. So while I have been spinning to get more of the main color for this project, I of course kept on knitting and then I ran into another problem which, which is actually just the same problem but in a different color. Okay, I'm in the middle of a row. Excuse my recklessness. We are here with our magenta stripe. And this is all the magenta I have left. That's not enough for two extra stripes. But I'm not going to go through the entire process again of spinning the yarn, dyeing it magenta with the cochineal. So I've thought up a couple of alternatives. I could continue using this yarn and then alternate it with a yarn that is close but no cigar to the color. I've got like a light pink, I've got some purples, I've got this old sweater that I once crocheted uh, but now I don't wear it anymore so I can unravel it and then reuse that yarn. And then another possibility I thought of was well, what my backside looks like is not one of my problems, so I could just swap for a different color, because maybe I prefer it to be all wool. And then I thought of this color that I spun uh, for my farmer's hat. I'm not sure because this was actually spun to be a DK weight and this to be fingering. My gauge might be entirely off when I do this. I feel like the best shot at making it look actually nice is combining the lighter pink and the magenta. Because all the rest I feel is too dark and vibrant. Let's do it. If anyone feels the need to call me stupid, they can do so right now, this very instant. You had your chance, you can no longer do this. I dyed more fluff magenta. Past me foresaw that I needed this. <laughs> so, when I'm done spinning the main color, I will spin this because this is in every way a better solution than knitting with the light pink. That was one spinning frenzy. This is still a little bit less than I had hoped. This is another <laughs> mastodon of a skein. If this is still not enough, to finish the pattern, then I will claim no responsibility in having any measurements wrong. And four ounces is just a blatant lie. I, I said it. If this is not enough of the main color, then screw that pattern. I'm kind of guessing that I have to title this video How Not To Knit With Your Hand Spun. But you know, chaos brain. That, that's, that's all I have to say for myself. Now, if any one of you might think, Yenta, why are you still making wool sweaters? It's March. You should be thinking about your spring and summer wardrobe. I'm just going to say to you, the weather cannot be trusted. It's 
small update. I was able to finish these two stripes of the magenta with the original magenta and then um, alternate it with this cane and I am now in the middle of my final row of magenta. I am going to make it! Yes! It is a slightly paler color as you can see and that was to be expected as this was the second dye path of the cochineal. But it's the closest color we could possibly get. So nice. Also, this is my back. And as I said, what my back looks like is not my problem. When you see me again, I'll probably be in a car knitting all the way up to the south of France again, keeping in character. And you know, as they say, three times a charm. So, yes, you have guessed right. I did not have enough yarn. I ran out of yarn yet again. So I decided to unravel my sleeves again because I thought it would be more important to have the correct sleeve head than to actually have the five and a half inches of sleeve at the bottom. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We are going to frog the sleeves, knit them again. But as the song in the background says, nothing stands in our way. Wrap up time. What do you think? Because personally, um, to me, it's kind of a bit of a disappointment. It doesn't look at all what I was expecting it to look. That firstly comes from the part that the sleeve construction is not the same as I thought it was um, for engineering its sweater. And I could have known if I had read the pattern before I started, but the chaos goblin in my brain doesn't work with rationale, it works with emotions and senses. So it looks pretty similar in the picture and that was enough for me. But now it doesn't look similar at all because I just had the exact amount of yarn to finish the sleeve heads. That, 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 that was everything. There is no extra length to the sleeves, there is no cuff. I might, I don't know, I might one day like gather the sleeves that so that they become like, I don't know if you can, if I can uh, judge it a bit like a puff sleeve, I don't know, maybe, maybe that would be cute. The best thing for me to do would be to completely frog this and do it again. But you know me as well as I do. I am not going to do that. It is wearable. I mean, I had to do some adjustments. I placed the shoulders a little bit higher than they were and I made I made a box pleat in the neck because the neck band was really really broad and not flattering at all. So yeah, it is wearable. The yarn is still absolutely lovely because it is Flemish sheep and you know that Flemish sheep has my whole heart. And even though I find this sweater, blouse, whatever you call it, thing, 
quite a disappointment. I still wanted to make this video for you because I do still think that I showed quite a bit of interesting problem solving skills and tips that you can work with when knitting with hand spun. But again, I am not a good teacher. I don't know the first thing about the theory of spinning and knitting. I just do. I am a chaos goblin. I learn through experience. And this was a learning experience. Four ounces was a lie. Anyway, this is all I have got to say about this project. So, if you want to see some actual vintage knitting projects that were a lot less frustrating, I can recommend these two videos. And all that rests for me to say is if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans and maybe you could like, comment or subscribe, but of course that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. Bye! Um, my gauge might be didn't be bleh. Thank you, church. Six o'clock.